Hello, and welcome to the latest Kite Factory Fireside Chat. I'm Mike Colling, the founder, and we are the Kite Factory. We're an independent performance media agency that uses heart, art, and science to grow our clients' reach, reputation, and net revenues. And I'm very privileged to be joined today by Marcus Missum. Marcus is currently Director of Communications and Fundraising at Wardrade, but is soon to be Director of Marketing and Fundraising at Leonard Cheshire. Marcus has long been a leading voice for change in fundraising and has not just advocated, but he's delivered real tangible change at Wardrade. They have been the go to case study to prove the effectiveness of an engagement strategy to deliver better outcomes for both supporters and the organization. Net voluntary income has more than doubled on Marcus's watch and more supporters have now claim that Wardrade is the organization they love above all others. In the very odd hour Marcus doesn't devote to Wardrade, he serves as a trustee for Bond and chairs the IFC advisory panel. He can also be found trekking out in far-flung parts of the globe, including the Arctic and High Nepal. Welcome, Marcus. And thank you, Mike. And that's very flattering of you to say that about, about me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for you to inv invite me onto this to have a fireside chat with you. So the two of us are here to spend 20 minutes or so reflecting on what Marcus is most proud of having achieved in his nine years at Wartrade, the challenges that fundraisers face in 2021, and his hopes and ambitions for the sector in the coming years. So Marcus, nine years at Wartrade, three times the average tenure for a marketing director. What are you most proud to have achieved in all that time? Gosh, well, you know, when you put it like that, it, it feels like a very, very long time. Uh, but to, I mean, nine years, gosh. But to tell you the truth, it hasn't felt anything like nine years. Um, you know, in that time, we've come a very long way. But uh, in, in terms of my vision of where we could have got to and where we still can get to, it's, it's, it feels like we're in the foothills. And, uh, you know, to use your, your, you know, you mentioned I like trekking. So to use that analogy, we're in the foothills and I, I can see the peak towering above us and it's emblazoned in the sun. And it's incredibly exciting uh, and and it's challenging us. It's saying, come on, go for it. So so we've come a long way, but I think, you know, there's a, there's a heck of a lot way, longer way we can go. And we've only just started. But in terms of your question, what am I most proud of? Uh, I, th I think the simple answer is the is the transformation. And, you know, water aid today is completely unrecognisable from what it was nine years ago. Uh, we've changed the mindset and belief system from being risk averse to being agile and adaptive. Uh, creating and maximizing opportunities. We've delivered a radical shift in our strategy to it being digital first and advocacy led. Um, and in so doing, we set in place a motion, a, motion, a momentum of continual development that, that will be sustained. And what I really, really hope is that in nine years time, war trade will look completely different from the war trade that I'm leaving. Uh, and you know, this year, the engagement strategy really came into its own. We pushed forward things uh, because the crisis gave us that opportunity uh, and that's seen in the results uh, and uh, gosh, whoever gets the job from me is going to have a stonking first year because we've beaten all acquisition targets uh, this year. Uh, you know, we took some knocks in some areas, but in other areas, we we completely maximised it. Uh, and, you know, I'm proud of the, the challenge we set to the sector in terms of shifting to engagement strategy from transactional fundraising, you know, as you mentioned. Uh, and, and I was reflecting uh, the other day, do you remember, Mike, in 2016, uh, when we're at IFC and we're presenting together and I, and I said, and it was went down a record in third sector, that the fundraising model was broken and that I committed to returning to IFC, I think I said in two years time, uh, and sharing a new model. Uh, and at that time, I got emails from colleagues some saying I was completely wrong and you know I didn't know what the hell I was talking about uh, some agreeing uh, and some wishing I just hadn't said it and actually someone wrote to me saying you know cheers mate thanks to you my boss is now asking me really awkward questions uh, and so you know I'm proud that box has been opened uh, you know discussions are happening that didn't happen before and and thankfully I think you know the box hasn't just been opened I think the, the lid's been ripped off and thrown away and you know it's never going to shut again um, and yeah, I th but I think the thing I'm most proudest of uh, has got to be the, the many people's lives who we've been able to transform because of what we've delivered through our engagement strategy. Um, and, and that hasn't just driven money, 
but it's also driven advocacy impact as well. And yeah, I'm really, really proud of that. But it has driven money, hasn't it? I mean, in this last year, water aid have doubled the number of new regular givers that they have recruited. I mean, water aid's had a fabulous pandemic, but that that doesn't seem to be true of the sector as a whole. I mean, I hear stories of doom and gloom, and I wonder whether you know where are we four years on from your the sector is broken, whether you'd agree with that statement even more. Um, yeah, I, I I I I do agree with it, but equally I kind of don't agree with it, and it really depends on where the organisations are and what change uh, they made before they went into the sector. I mean, it's true. I mean, you know, we 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 got knocked all trade uh, in the pandemic. Some of our income was down. You know, the obvious areas such as you know community and events, events didn't happen. Uh, but even there, we're agile and we adapted. Uh, but yes, in terms of mass audience. Um, and acquisition of regular givers. Yeah, we, we've had a really, really good year. Uh, I, I think, you know, what, what we did is we, we, we saw what was happening and we adapted and we adapted rapidly. Uh, we made decisions without going through the cumbersome, you know, escalation up and asking everyone across the organisation and having big debates. You know, effectively, we're in a crisis. We went into crisis mode. Uh, and, and I think, you know, it's that adaptability that many organisations don't don't have. Uh, you know, if I step back from the year and, and think about the sector as a whole, uh, I think we're at a critical junction in the road. You know, it's a strategic inflection point. Uh, and if I think about many organisations fundraising before the pandemic and even during the pandemic, uh, it, you know, it, it's to use an analogy, it's not even beyond the sell by date anymore. It, or rather, it's not just a case of beyond the sell by date. It's actually now beyond the eat by date. You know, it has little or no relevance to today and certainly none for the mid to near future. Uh, they're effectively long tailing and not adapting. And sorry, to use another analogy, this is going to be a bit analogy fest, sorry. Uh, it feels a bit like there's a debate that's going on between is it VHS or is it Betamax? Meanwhile, the market has moved on. Uh, you know, the people out there, the consumers, they're, 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 they're into streaming. So, uh, so you know, why is that debate even happening? Uh, and and I realise in, in, in referencing you know, Betamax and VHS, there's some people listening and probably thinking, what the hell is he on about? So I'm coming across like an old fart because many people don't know anything other than streaming. So, so you know, I think there's something interesting in that. Uh, and, you know, there are massive challenges. Uh, and you know, and and some of them seem unsurmountable. Questions like relevance, credibility, authenticity, lack of transparency, power dynamics, colonial, colonialism, and there's there's others. And let's be clear, these have been there for ages, but they got accelerated up the critical list during the last year. So in truth, you know, as a sector, you know, I think for a long time we should have been adapting and changing as a continual development over a long period of time. Uh, and I don't mean tactics, but strategically, so effectively disrupting ourselves. Um, and it's you know it's a bit like training uh, for a race. It's about building muscle mass, technique, mindset, discipline. Uh, and you know, let's face it, our sector isn't great at at, at adapting. Uh, and in terms of you know, let alone transformational innovation, you know, it's not even prioritised nor resourced properly. You know, we're so fixated on four to one ROIs, aren't we? And you know, if I think about fundraising directors as a whole, you know, they're given the impossible conundrum of generate long-term sustainable growth, yet all the restrictions that are put around them, uh, you know, place them in, limits their ability to deliver it. So, so, you know, I think there's a leadership challenge in there going forward. Uh, and what's happened in the past year has been massive disruption. And I think few were match fit for it, um, and but others weren't. And those that weren't, I think are gonna suffer and they're gonna keep suffering for a long time and it might be terminal. Those that were fit, uh, you know, are doing really, really well. So. My over reflection is, you know, yeah, I, I'm I'm very positive. I can I can see that there's great opportunities. I can see there's great horizons. I can see that, you know, that there there's a world of possibility. Uh, and uh, but what's key is being adaptive and being agile. Uh, and I, you know, many aren't. And uh, you know, if we if we think about that disruption, and we think about the pandemic that was done to us, I th I think you know we 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 need to keep disrupting ourselves because I, th I think the biggest challenge is yet to come and I think our biggest challenge is Generation Z and you know what that's going to be really really exciting and so for me the new sustainability in terms of you know everyone talks about sustainability new sustainability I think is agility so I, I um, that's what I'm excited about and I'm looking forward to it happening. Yeah no it is isn't it now as you're as you're saying that you know I'm, I'm reflecting on Darwin's words you know, it's not the strongest that survive 
yeah. but it's those that can adapt most to to change. Yeah. And I I do wonder if we've just seen an extinction event for a significant part of the sector. Yeah, whether this is actually you know the meteor hitting Chichen Itza, and yeah you know, the clouds gone up in the air, and there are still dinosaurs walking and talking, but they don't know they're dead yet. Yeah, but but so if you're right, you're spot on right, and and I th I think the 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 inequality in our sector, if that's the right word, is that the big entities, the big brands, in many ways, the, 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 there isn't a free market force for them to go bust. They will never go bust because they won't be allowed to go bust. Uh, and whereas the ones who will suffer are the smaller ones. Uh, and and so I think there is, you know, and you could argue, well, the smaller ones, it's because they're not agile, they're not adaptive, they haven't got the resources to fall back on. The big organisations, I, 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 I suspect, you know, some of the dinosaurs will survive and some of the dinosaurs won't recognise they needed to adapt. Uh, and so there'll be another extinction uh, moment. Um, I think I think some of them will recognise they needed to adapt. I, I think, but the biggest question is, uh, if I if I if I look at you know if I look at big organisations um, and if I look at our sector, you know, in many ways we we are the last sector to be disruptive uh, disruptive through disintermediation and, and other, other things such as that. You know, and I, I see there's big organisations who are big with big infrastructure and they need big fundraising operations to support big infrastructure. Uh, and then I look at the smaller ones from Wiregel. So I'm I'm looking forward to a disruption that completely redefines things in a way that makes the big dinosaurs and even small dinosaurs change. Uh, and unfortunately, say, you know, I think it's going to take probably one of them going extinct that's going to quickly change things. Uh, because I fear that post pandemic, many won't, many organizations won't learn from what's happened and they'll just go, oh, that was great. We got through that. We survived. We fell back on our reserves, whatever. And they'll go back to what they've been doing in the past. And I think that would be a missed opportunity for learning. So, so change for the sector. But there's also change coming for you personally. Where are we? Two weeks and uh, you're off to, to Leonard Cheshire. Yeah. So so what are you most looking forward to there? And what are the ch what's the first challenge you're going to embrace there? Uh, okay. So uh, so uh, and there's just so much that excites me about my new role uh, and 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 in in terms of the the opportunities facing Leonard Cheshire uh, and and being invited to 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 join them to be part of that change to help drive that change uh, you know Leonard Cheshire is at a pivotal moment as we define our new strategy it recognizes the need to change and has a passion to deliver that change uh, and the recent appointment of Ruth Owen as the new chief executive signals that determination uh, and and the momentum uh, to drive the change uh, and um, if I think about Leonard Cheshire you know it, it has a great heritage to build from it's got great passion and and an exciting ambition you know that's the perfect trio uh, and and it triggers my curiosity and it stimulates me intellectually uh, and and yeah totally excites me around about the opportunities you know it's not going to be played sailing uh, there will be challenges and but it's the passion and determination which will take the whole organization forward uh, because this is a total organizational change that's the the opportunity uh, and you know someone once told me that the most important thing is to be realistic uh, sorry is to respect the past uh, be realistic about the present and ambitious about the future and and it strikes me that uh, that you know that that's great advice and it's so relevant to 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 Len Cheshire my new role there um you know in terms of my focus gosh so top of mind is repositioning the brand from services to rights uh, and to put in place an engagement strategy that has advocacy at its heart that builds a movement of like-minded people who want to change the world for themselves and for others around them uh, and you know, culture is key. It was it was the key bit of the jigsaw at War Trade, and I suspect it will be key at Leonard Cheshire. Uh, and you know, and it's the best starting point because everything builds from that foundation. But you know, heck, uh, I haven't even got there yet. Uh, I have yet to get under the skin and uh, and engage with my colleagues uh, to hone my thinking. And you know, one of the key things I'm going to be asking my colleagues, both in the executive team and also you know the team I'm inheriting is you know what is their ambition and what's their vision and how can I help them deliver it uh, so I think you know let, let's talk in six months time Mike uh, and for now you know I'm really really excited to
to be joining the team and to work with the talent and supporting them to make you know the ambition a reality uh, and I feel very honoured that they've asked me to join them. Okay so, so I won't ask any more about Leonard Cheshire because I think that's unfair but maybe if we, we let's turn to your ambitions for the sector yeah because when you and I started working together in 2012 engagement wasn't on anybody's horizon it was pure transactional fundraising face-to-face -face and door-to-door -door were probably at their peaks. yeah a transactional mugging model yeah and I remember people urging Waterloo to embrace door-to-door -door. yeah and you resisting it as being completely the wrong thing to do and now as as you leave Waterloo 2021 yeah, everybody is talking about engagement and is talking about how do you create value for a supporter to create value for the organization. So, so if we meet again in say five years time rather than nine years time, what would your ambition for the sector be? How would you like to have seen it change or the advances it would make if we talk in 2026? Gosh, you know, that, 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 that's a brilliant question and uh, it, it's a massive one. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, let, let me think. OK, so I tell you what, the. Um, five, OK, so five years from now kind of feels like it's just around the corner. Uh, but, you know, given the fact that the nature of change itself has changed and by that, I mean, you know, the 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 the, the speed of change uh, and the speed of reinvention and the speed at which, uh, you know, things become legacy and old. Uh, I, you know, I, I think I think a heck of a lot will happen in five years. Uh, and I really hope that's the case, uh, you know, in terms of moving from transactional fundraising to engagement strategy, that's not job done. And it's not about reaching a final destination. Uh, it, it, it's about continual adaptation and agility. And I think, you know, what, what we see as engagement today won't be engagement tomorrow. I've already spoken about Gen Z, you know, the, 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 there's a whole different yeah. Yeah. Uh, set of expectations and dynamics in there. Uh, you know, and and I, th I think I think, you know, it, it, I, it kind of kind of amuses me how many how many of my colleagues have uh, titles, which is director of engagement. And someone said to me the other day, they said, look, Marcus, you know, you, you haven't changed your title. Everyone else has changed their title. Uh, and, um, and, and you know, it's, of course, it's not about changing the title. And I know for many of them, you know, it's not that. Uh, and but I, I still see people who 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 believe that they're doing a value exchange by just saying thank you to supporters and they're not really digging into the insight they're not really understanding how do we drive real value in a supporter's life whether it's an individual or organization uh, in a way that then is the primary focus and then we then drive value off the back of it it's that sweet spot of of co-creation and collaboration and partnership so, so if i think in terms of five years uh, I hope the sector looks completely different, uh, you know, uh, uh, but I've, I've, I've got a, I've got this nagging thing, uh, as you asked the question, that it kind of it sparked in my head. Uh, and I, I think, and sorry, this is going to go a bit Radio 4, Moral Maze type stuff. You know, I, 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 I question what we define as our sector. You know, our sector seems to be at the moment, it's, it's a sector of not-for-profits or charities, whatever we define them as. Um, and I question whether it should include other entities, uh, other entities that drive positive environmental and social impact uh, and change. Uh, and, you know, if it's the latter, and I strongly believe it should be, then, you know, that, that has to include individuals. Uh, you know, if we, and I'll come back to that in a second, it has to include community groups, non-formal networks, private sector, and the list goes on and on and on. So, so I think, you know, as, as entities within that ecosystem, we need to learn how to be collaborative. We need to be able to partner and partner with the unusual suspects. And if I think about it, you know, sadly, you know, I don't think our sector, I don't think collaboration and partnership comes natural to our sector, especially with those people who we perceive as being outside of our sector. Uh, and so I hope, I hope in five years time, our sector will be redefined. Uh, it will no longer exist as we know it. Uh, and, and if that's not the case, then at least that change has started to happen. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I hope our sector is defined as, you know, all entities who are driving environmental or social impact, and that will include the private sector. And, you know, I said individuals. If I think about, you know, the biggest, biggest social impact that's happened in the last 20 years, uh, has it been delivered by by charities? Has it been delivered by you know big organisations? Um, I can't think of any. 
And if I think now and I think about environment and I think about, you know, those sort of things, it's individuals who circumnavigated charities because they don't want to be defined by the boxes that we define things by and they're driving it forward. So I hope that the sector changes enough to accommodate and no, no, accommodate is the wrong word. We need to be open uh, to to fitting into the boxes, fitting into the, the models and methodology and collaborate. Uh, and so what I'll be really proud of in five years time is is you know we'll be sitting there probably you know i don't know i don't think you'll ever retire mike uh but you know you'd be post retirement age i'll be probably approaching retirement age uh we'll be having you know a drink of something or other and uh, i i'd like to be able to say you know in a really really small way uh i've, I've played a small part in that change uh in that shift and in terms of Lenin cheshire um yeah i i i, I will be saying, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, we're accelerating to a new place. And in doing that, we're, we're doing some sector defining stuff. And and that in itself is helping to drive forward um, the wider sector and changing the wider sector. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. And I hope the word charity no longer exists. Yeah, yeah. because as, as you're talking, you know, I'm reflecting that actually, you could argue that the crowdfunding of Brewdog is a good as model uh, for you know, the Gen Zs of this world to achieve real change in their life and the life of others and do a force for good. And that is an interesting blend of the social, the commercial and the individual that I think might become a model for the sector going forward. Marcus. Yeah. And, and Mike, sorry, on that, sorry, on that, if we think about it, you know, so, so, you know, we, 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 we had inherent trust, we had inherent respect, we haven't had to work as a sector to build it, whereas, you know, and what, what's been knocked, we suddenly realised we don't have that inherent trust, we don't have that inherent respect, uh, and that's really rocked us on our, our, our feet. If we look at Gen Z, you know, they, 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 they do not have that, that, it's not there, it's not in the bank already, so we've got to learn to build it, and it's on their terms, uh, and if we cannot fit in their world on their terms, then we have no relevance and no right to think that they're going to they're going to engage with us to help us, to help them rather drive their own personal purpose. Yeah, and that That's really it. will be the, the acid test of can we properly engage with them on yeah. a one to one peer to peer as opposed to just the begging bowl out. Yeah. Marcus, as always, <laughs> it's really stimulating talking with you. Um, and we wish you all the best in your next venture to change the sector at Leonard Cheshire. Oh, thank you, Mike. And, and you know, I, 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 you, you guys have very much been partners in that change at War Trade. Uh, and so I felt that in answering the questions, you know, there's, there's lots of credit to you guys as well, because you, you've been true partners with us and helped deliver it. Uh, and thank you for, for spending this time with me and asking me those questions. You've really got me thinking. You're welcome. Have a good day, Marcus. You too, Mike.